Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Leslie Bodner. I'm with MSC Software. Um, e. Jun Fan uh, is also here with me. Both of us are part of the Global uh, Corporate Marketing Organization. Um, so thank you very much for joining our webinar today. And the topic of this webinar um, is, is basically focused on um, methods for um, incorporating multi-body dynamics simulation software into mechanical engineering courses. Um, we have developed a new Adams uh, tutorial kit for professors and students. Um, and what we'd like to do is actually talk a little bit about that today and discuss some ways in which we can help universities and professors bring that into their mechanical engineering courses. Let me go into slideshow mode here. Um, we have two special guests today with us from Cal Poly. Um, first, we have uh, Professor uh, Julia uh, Wu, and she's with us, as well as Professor Frank Owen. Um, and Professor Wu was very instrumental in the uh, development of our Adams Tutorial Kit and has had some great ideas on how it can be applied into some of the existing course curriculum at Cal Poly, specifically the design of machinery course that she's involved in teaching. And both Professor Wu and uh, Professor Owen have extensive background in rotor dynamics as well and have uh, some ideas that they're going to share later in the session um, that would be hopefully useful to the audience. So today we'd like to provide a quick um, introduction to atoms and multi-body dynamics simulation in case a few of you on the call are not aware of what uh, atoms can do and what multi-body dynamic simulation is um, or how it's being used in the industry. Um, I'll share a couple industry applications and use cases of atoms and multi-body dynamic simulation software. Um, we'll also share a few survey results that um, we, we conducted a study last year with our existing uh, customer base. And it was around multi-body dynamics and the use of uh, the simulation within their product development process and where they thought it was going over the next several years. So I'll share some of those results. And then we're going to introduce the new Adams Tutorial Kit, again, that we've developed specifically for mechanical engineering programs. Um, and then e will show a quick demonstration of one of the problems in the textbook so you have an idea of how that works. And then, again, Professor Wu and Professor Owen will provide some feedback. So what is multi-body dynamic simulation? Um, some, some call it functional virtual prototyping or mechanical dynamics. Um, and really, multi-body dynamic simulation is, if you think about it this way, is it's really the virtual evaluation of a system uh, comprised of parts, either rigid or flexible, um, also comprised of constraints and forces. And if you think of a system, it could be a landing gear system or a gearbox or a suspension system, for example. Um, and those multi-body dynamic simulation software allows engineers to do system level analysis using 3D computer models to study the interaction between multiple components within the assembly. Many, um, I would say, often get multi-body dynamics confused with kinematics. Um, and just to clarify, kinematics is really the study of, of basic motion. Um, you can visualize the motion um, on the, using computer models. But if you think of dynamics or multi-body dynamics, it really takes into account uh, forces and loads in moving mechanisms. Um, you can't truly accurately predict loads and joint forces in a basic motion or kinematic study um, in, in some of the, like let's say, CAD embedded tools. Um, whereas multi-body dynamics, um, such as the capabilities in atoms, offer engineers um, broader capabilities for modeling the complexities of, of, of assemblies and systems. So they can look at force and torque driven systems, um, you know, realistic connections with friction, um, and then generate loads and forces that can be later or subsequently used in an FEA analysis, for example. So these are just some basic benefits. Um, as you can imagine, multi-body dynamic simulation helps engineers um, working at corporations like Ford or Ferrari or Volvo, um, several companies around the world are, are really seeing value uh, in using multi-body dynamic simulations in their development process 
Um, it, it definitely accelerates innovation. They're able to look at more design concepts uh, earlier in the development process, which helps reduce time to market. Um, obviously, one of the biggest benefits of using simulation is to reduce physical testing costs um, and avoid, obviously, uh, surprises or problems that sometimes occur later in the development cycle. Um, many companies are really significantly increasing product quality and reducing warranty costs as a result of using uh, atoms and multi-body dynamic simulations. And, of course, trying to maximize um, you know, their, their CAD CAE ROI. Um, they're able to do that uh, very, very quickly uh, with some of the atom simulations that they're doing. Um, and they're able, again, to use atoms as a way of, of actually providing loads data to a, a finite element um, analysis later in the, in the design process and optimize um, the, the geometry configurations that they're working with earlier in the development cycle. So what is atoms? Atoms is, if you just look at it this way, is really the standard multi-body dynamic simulation software um, in the market, it, it simulates the behavior of moving parts in complex systems. And it, it's been instrumental in vehicle development since um, really the late 70s. Um, it's functional virtual prototyping capabilities for simulating uh, dynamic events associated with ride and handling, for example, are part of almost every vehicle dynamicist workflow. So it's used quite extensively in automotive. Um, at many of our customers, it's used to analyze and test um, you know, designs before creating an actual physical prototype, which ultimately saves you know, many of our customers hundreds of thousands of dollars um, and many, many man hours as well in, in the design process. Um, although Adams is used extensively in the automotive industry, it's, it's being used more and more by manufacturers across industries, um, even in, in consumer electronics um, companies who are designing things like, uh, you know, cameras, for example, modeling little mechanisms in the cameras. Um, so it's really picked up a lot of traction in uh, non-transportation markets, as well as, you know, again, machinery, machinery, heavy machinery, heavy equipment, automation machinery, um, robotics, even even companies uh, designing and manufacturing watercraft. Um, so it's really, it's a, it's a provides many capabilities and has a broad set of, of uh, applications for several industries. So what, what can atoms do? Um, this is just a quick highlight. Basically, its main use is system-level mechanical dynamic simulation. So it, it is used to study component interactions within an assembly or within a full system model. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's used to accurately predict loads for subsequent finite element analyses, so engineers can use atoms generate uh, loads within atoms and use those loads as inputs to an FEA analysis. Um, atoms is also used to, I mentioned this earlier, optimize uh, geometric configurations. So being able to use atoms actually prior to a detailed, uh, developing a detailed CAD model is very beneficial to many companies. Um, then they can look at the functional performance of the assembly or the system before they actually begin developing the detailed uh, CAD model. Another way of using it is for uh, vibration analysis, so things like frequency, uh, frequency domain analysis and, again, NVH analysis um, is used quite heavily there as well um, and is used as, has provided quite a bit of interoperability with um, structural analysis, FEA tools, as well as uh, fatigue applications. Um, so let me just go through a couple, let me actually, sorry about that, one more thing I wanted to mention here um, is that atoms um, can also be used together with uh, controls or 1D software. So students um, and, and researchers can really, and our customers, can take their atoms models and easily incorporate them into or within block diagrams that they've created within their preferred control system design software such as MATLAB. So by you know using atoms together with a control system software, it gives you a complete and accurate picture of your mechanism's real world operational behavior with the effects of control systems fully represented in that simulation. So just keep in mind it does provide nice uh, interoperability with, with 1D and controls applications as well. So I wanted to give you a couple quick industry um, application examples. 
here is just a, a small sample of manufacturers around the world who uh, who use atoms and, and, and trust atoms. Um, and it just a, again, it's pretty broad within the automotive industry, and we have a number of consumer products as well as uh, machinery customers using it. Um, this is just a quick look at some of the ways atoms is used to test um, uh, is used in the automotive industry. Um, one is in the, the powertrain group. They can perform dynamic analysis on vehicle powertrain systems. Um, they're using it in the durability group um, to perform accurate load history prediction for durability analysis. Um, it's used across uh, other groups like safety, um, where they can look at rollover prediction and loss of control simulations, um, NVH, uh, and ride. They're, it's used quite a bit in ride and handling and vehicle dynamics um, areas within the company, uh, handling and drivetrain. So understanding driveline performance effects uh, uh, you know that how how it affects uh, shift quality and things like that. So as you can see, it has a broad um, applicability in the automotive industry and is used within several groups within within the automotive manufacturers that we work with today. Um, a quick look at how it's used in aerospace. Um, landing gear, for example, is a highly complex system that depends on a lot of different components working together you know, to function precisely. So ADAMS is used to study the stress distribution for the dynamic landing gear systems. That's one example in aerospace. Um, I think most of you probably know that, that NASA, or maybe not, but NASA, uh, JPL, relied on ADAMS just recently to validate the landing sequences and determine loads on sub-assemblies and components on the Curiosity rover during its uh, landing sequences on Mars. So that was a very, very interesting application of atoms. Um, this is just another example, looking at load distribution of a flexible aircraft used in, used in um, aerospace. And then in machinery, um, sorry, I'm having a little bit of problem there. Machinery, again, I mentioned there's quite a bit of use of atoms. Um, it's being used um, to predict dynamic loads, in this case, in this example, for an electric rope shovel. Um, and atoms is used by companies like Caterpillar, Caterpillar and John Deere and others. Um, so it, it does have extensive uh, applicability in machinery as well. So, what I want also one thing I wanted to mention was that the um, the simulation and analysis market is expected to reach 7.2 billion by the year 2017. This data comes from an organization called SimData. They study the PLM um, product lifecycle management and simulation and analysis market. And really, what the whole point I wanted to make here was this represents a significant growth in the use of computer aided engineering within commercial companies. Um, as the industry looks, and we, we, we essentially think that this provides, uh, represents an opportunity for engineering students as well. As the industry looks to hire uh, more engineers with you know, simulation software skills to support their product development initiatives, learning to use simulation and the application of computer modeling and analysis during school within the engineering program will, in our minds, help better prepare students for engineering jobs in the future. So this is just kind of an interesting fact I wanted to, to bring out. Um, this was a study we found, the recent study by, by ABET, that uh, I believe 1,600 employer respondents rated, in this case, in this survey, uh, they rated modern technology as highly important or essential for new engineering hires. Um, this is what, what employers who took the survey had said. 77% said that the ability of new hires to use modern engineering tools, such as computer-aided engineering software, is highly important or essential. So this, this slide kind of shows a, a holistic view of the engineering design process and how CAE fits into it, how, in, how it fits into that process. Um, and I think that, that you know, students um, and, and giving them insight and visibility into a product de development process and the stages of product development and how simulation is used within that process is very important. Um, testing and validation is one of the most critical components of the product development process, as we know. 
Um, five to ten years ago, engineers really were using simulation software really as a testing and validation tool, but advancements in the technology, we've made it easier to use, things like that have made it possible for more design engineers and more types of engineers to use simulation earlier in the design process um, so they can arrive at optimized uh, designs faster. So I think it's important that we, we, we share this information with students and, and look at ways in which we can get them excited about um, using technology, simulation, or learning new simulation technology as part of their, um, their, their schooling. So this is just a, can I just summarize this, but we feel that students who learn to test and validate their designs or how the industry is, is doing that with simulation software and methods helps them a better understand these kinds of things. So again, this is why we want to work with you to figure out a way in which we can bring that, that technology into your program. Um, Adam, just real quickly, I wanted to mention, can be easily incorporated into a, a range of um, courses across mechanical engineering, um, automotive design, civil engineering, mechatronics. These are kind of some of the industry segments. Um, if you have dynamics courses or um, design of mechanisms courses or design of machinery, um, robotics type courses, Adam can be applied um, and introduced to your students, I would say, within many of these courses. And we were very interested in getting your feedback on where you think it could be beneficial in bringing that in. Um, here's just a small sample of universities who are successfully incorporating ADAMS into their courses today. University of Michigan is using it in their ME350 course. Um, University of Southern California um, in their AME 539 multi-body dynamics course and analytical methods in robotics. Um, Technical University of Berlin is using it um, in their courses. Introduction to FEM, actually, they're bringing it into that course, as well as structural dynamics. And then, uh, of course, Cal Poly, we have a couple uh, professors, like I mentioned, with us today that will kind of talk about how they're using it. Um, and Professor Wu uh, is actually uh, introducing it to her students in the, this year for the first time in her design and machinery course. So this was just a quote from one of our professors. Um, and again, we can put you in touch with any, any of our professor uh, contacts who are using Adams if you would like to learn a little bit more about how they're using it and how they've um, successfully brought that into their courses. So I wanted to, before I hand it over to Ejun to give you an example of our and show you our Adams new Adams tutorial kit, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the survey that we did recently. Uh, around multi-body dynamic simulation. This was a survey that we did with our customers, so the industry. Um, 775 uh, complete pe customers completed the survey. Um, there was a mix in terms of industry, 25% from automotive, 30% from aerospace, and 10% uh, from machinery, and then a mix of other industries. And we asked questions um, like this. Uh, what's the projected growth in simulations involving multi-body dynamics over the next three years. Um, and 40% said that simulation involving multi-body dynamics is expected to grow two to four times the current number over the next three years. 5% um, believe that, that it actually will grow more than five times. So my point here is that it's not just us saying this. I, I think you know we were hearing from our customers, hey, we're having you know multi-body dynamic simulation is important. And we, it is growing, um, and we're, we're planning on doing more. We want to hire more people that understand how to use Atoms. How can you help us prepare students coming out of school? So that's really the, the reason and um, the, the, I would say the driver behind us um, wanting to work with you all and, and, and developing these, these tutorial kits to make it easier. Um, when we ask uh, the level of ease in finding and hiring engineers with mechanical dynamic simulation experience, 77% um, rated it somewhat difficult to very, very difficult. Um, and nearly 6% said they really can't find anyone, um, which I find interesting. But the point here is that many of our customers are having a hard time finding engineers with a, a good level of, of experience in multi-body dynamic simulation. Um, they were also asked to rate the multi-body dynamic skill level of, of newly graduated engineers. Um, in this case here, 66% of, of the manufacturers we surveyed said that the multi-body dynamic skill level of newly graduated engineers is somewhat insufficient 
to highly insufficient in their mind. So they want us, our customers are asking us to work with um, our university um, you know, partners to figure out new ways of introducing atoms, um, just like other softwares like MATLAB or Simulink, for example, to make it more prevalent in the engineering program. Um, this was just the last one I wanted to bring up, result that uh, we asked, what, what multi-body dynamics technical skills do you expect engineers to have when starting a new position at your company? Um, you know, and they said really just basic knowledge, 35%. Um, I'd like them to, to know more about, you know, load, load generation, um, and some of the others were, were less important. Um, but flexible bodies, integration with FEA was fairly important as well. So this was just to kind of gauge what they were looking for and how we might develop, uh, I would say, custom tutorial kits, let's say, for engineering students to help them get this knowledge. So as a result of that survey, as a result of us talking to the industry and our customers and to our university professor partners, we decided to build this first um, comprehensive Adams tutorial kit specifically for mechanical engineering courses. It's 190 pages, approximately. There are 26 sample problems within this kit. And it's, it's meant really to supplement existing course curriculum. We want to make it as easy as possible to, uh, to, to help you bring it into your current courses. Um, it can actually be applied, this particular kit can be applied to any mechanical design course, any dynamics course, any robotics course. Um, and again, we want to work with you to figure out, you know, what can we do to even improve it more, and what would be maybe a second edition of this that we could develop for specifically for some of your courses you're teaching today. Now, this particular um, curriculum kit has four problems uh, within it that come directly from the Norton Design of Machinery textbook that we have converted into Adam's um, problems. So I'm going to turn it over to Ejun right now, and um, he can explain uh, what you're looking at right here is really the table of contents, and he can explain sort of the, the different level of exercises and the learning curve here for students. OK, thank you, Leslie. Um, at this point, I'm going to take the control back and then share my desktop. OK, let me know when you can see my screen. There. OK, great, thank you. Um, yes, uh, as Leslie was um, introduced before, the, one of the main reasons why we created this uh, Adams Tutorial Kit is um, for the students to uh, make, it, make it easier for the student to get started with using Adams. So frequently, we have uh, questions coming from the students uh, saying, I'm a college student. I want to use Adams. What is the training material out there that I can use for free? Uh, so previously, there's a, not really a good answer for those type of questions. And that is why we kind of uh, developed this Adam, Adam's tutorial kit. So I already see there's a question in the Q&A window saying, is that a, how much does that cost? Is that free? So it is totally free to all the professors and students. We don't charge that for anything. Um, so uh, I will show you, uh, show you later how you can download that from the website. So basically, we have uh, four types of uh, problems. Uh, for the first section, it's what we call the beginner's level. We have about 14 um, problems so far. It's, um, it's more related to some um, basic, um, me uh, basic mechanisms in the textbooks. And also, it's very relevant to the daily um, problems that students deal with in classes like the dynamics or the, the kinematics or the, the mechanical designs. So those are not very uh, hard to complete. It's, um, it's uh, created to get the students, um, get, get them started, started using atoms, basically. And uh, that's targeted towards the beginning, uh, the beginner users. So for the section two, we have uh, a few actually a few really nice uh, workshops that comes directly from the Adams training materials. And uh, those are actually free in this Adams tutorial, but we charge them uh, for the, uh, we charge them in the actual Adams uh, 
uh, training materials, but here it's free. So we have um, problems like the valve, valve train mechanism, cam uh, rocker valve uh, mechanism, or the stamping mechanism. Those are some very interesting problems. So after you're done with the first section, uh, we highly encourage you to continue with the second section. You will learn a lot of things like uh, how to do the post-processing, how to create, um, how to create a, uh, a measure for your, some of the motions that you're interested in, things like that. And after that, we, have, uh, we are coming to the third section, which is called the textbook problems. Uh, as Leslie mentioned before, we have um, converted four textbook problems from the design machinery textbook into the Adams example. So what the students can do is that they can uh, go through those textbook problems. They can manu manually calculate those problems and get those results, and then they can follow that tutorial and create the Adams model and then get the results from the simulation. After that, they can compare uh, their hand calculation with the simulation results and see the difference. Of course, there are some extra benefits that you can get from creating an Adams model, and I will mention that later. Uh, in the fourth section, which was uh, what we call the Adams machinery application, it's uh, another area where uh, we have introduced about four uh, problems, uh, including mechanisms like a gear pair, or the like the belt mecha mechanisms, or the bearing bearing elements. It is a uh, Adams machinery is a new um, toolkit or a new productivity tool that we developed recently, that makes it easier for the students uh, or for everyone to incorporate uh, common mechanical um, components like gear bearings, chain belts into the, the machinery design. We have uh, introduced uh, also a few interesting um, uh, workshops here so the students can take a look and go through those examples after they're done with the first three sections. Okay, now let's go through uh, just uh, one example in the, in the third section to give you an idea of uh, what the textbook looks like and how you might use that. Okay, so this problem actually comes from the, the textbook uh, Design of Machinery, Norton textbook, the fifth edition, on page 220 and 221. So this is the power hacksaw mechanism, and it's actually an offset crank slider mechanism. So the problem here uh, described is that uh, it's asking the students to find and plot the horizontal stroke of the saw blade as a function of the angle of link 2. Link 2 is this uh, red link here. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at the uh, tutorial kit. So this is what the tutorial kit looks like. It's basically a PDF file. It's, a, it's pretty big. It's, uh, it has about 200 pages with uh, 26 examples. So you can, we, let's go directly to example 19 and take a look. So in each example, you will basically find uh, the step-by-step -step tutorial of how to create a model like that. Uh, of course, in the, in the beginning, like two sections, you, you, might find, you might find that the tutorial, uh, the step-by-step -step tutorial might be uh, I would say more detailed than the the the, the section three and four, since we have um, we're assuming that since you have gone through the first two sections, you have grasped the basic uh, like um, understanding of how to use atoms to create forces and create geometries, things like that. So. It will include a series of steps. Uh, if you go through them, you will basically be able to create this model and also be able to create the motions, measures, and you know you will know how to simulate and run the simulation of that model. So now let's go to the Adams software just to take a more intuitive uh, view of this uh, particular model. So we can actually simulate here. I don't think it will take too much time, so let's just take a look. And then we will set the step size to uh, 
0.1 second. And Professor Wu and Professor um, Owen, uh, they will talk about how you might use um, atoms or incorporate atoms into your courses like dynamics analysis and uh, dynamics courses or courses like design machinery since they are the expert in that area. But to me, I mean, it's really in intuitive and a really visual. It's, it's a very good way for the students to visualize the complex physics behind each mechanism by creating this, um, by creating this atoms model. And uh, now after we are done with the um, simulation, let's go to the post-processor. So you can always, uh, you know, you can always replay the animation so in this case, um, besides, uh, we have created uh, basically two measures. One measure is the uh, the stroke, and then the other measure is the angle of link two. And uh, in the post processor, we will be able to basically um, connect those two together. So let's load the animation on the right hand side. Okay, um, so we, you can play the animation here. So not only can you get the results between the uh, the the stroke um, horizontal um, axis and uh, the relationship between that and uh, the angle of the link to you can also get things like the contact force between the this block and uh, the, actually the source slide and that is something not that's uh, it's not going to be easy for you to calculate if you're doing it uh, using a manual calculation method. And after you are done with the simulation, you can we, we can go to the the actual uh, I would say the theoretical solution and uh, see the comparison. And so, as you might uh, see on the screen, uh, this is how you will be calculating uh, that results using a manual uh, theoretical method. And this is the results you get from a, a hand calculation. And this is the, the result you get from the atom solution. And you, as you can see, those are those two are in perfect correlation with each other. And in that way, you can also, it's another very interesting way for the students to validate whether they have the correct results or not. OK, so um, these are uh, all the demonstration, uh, uh, all the demonstrations I want to um, perform here. So just to uh, let you know how you can download that um, Adams tutorial kit from the website. First, you can go to the MSC software web page. And then under Academia um, tab, you can find there's a, um, a button called the Supplemental Tutorial Kits. If you click that, you will go to our tutorial kit web page. And you can download it from by clicking that link on the right hand side. So that's basically how you can download this whole tutorial kit, which includes the tutorial PDF and also all the Atoms files that you needed to complete those uh, examples. And that's free to every student and every professor. Uh, OK, I think uh, that's all for my part. And uh, I, I think I'm going to turn the, the speaker to uh, Professor Wu and Professor Owen. and. Uh, Professor, so you, so you can uh, take this chance to um, share with your um, counterparts in other universities how you uh, think you can use that in your uh, courses or your just your any of your understanding of how atoms can be incorporated in the mechanical engineering courses. Okay, thank you, Yi Jun. Yeah. Uh, thank good you. morning, everyone. Good morning from California. Cal Poly, yes. 
Uh, I will talk several minutes, then I will give Dr. Frank Owen to talk about the uh, the application of our future application of our atoms. So first of all, I I have taught two classes in Kapali uh, using atoms in our lab. We have the lab section. Um, yeah, the lecture and the lab. So each week we have three hours lab. So uh, the first class, what we do is to use uh, those atoms. Um, um, use a very simple Adams example from the this tutorial kit, just like the first part. Uh, for my ME470 design of machinery class teaching. So um, at the beginning, that the first week, the students will get familiar with Adams. Then the second the second week, what I will do is to assign the homework. Uh, just uh, let the students just verify. For example, the first week we will talk about the four-bar linkage design. So the students design their four-bar linkage, and they will immediately just finish that in atoms. Then they will see how it looks like, how it moves with the four-bar linkage, uh, five-bar linkage or six-bar linkage, like that. Um, so this is a good thing for the students. Um, so I, before I proceed, I want to talk about a little bit of background about Kapali. Uh, the design machinery class is a, is actually is a required class for majority of the universities. But Kapali, just like 20 years ago, we had this class. Why we stopped that? Because a lot of students complain there are a lot of math involved. So they cannot see any results. They got to use hand calculation to calculate the results, but they cannot see how it works. Then we stop <laughs> this class. So recently, I found out the students have a lot of senior people. Oh, they build the mechanism the machine without any dynamics analysis. Then I asked them, why don't you have this? They said, because it's hard to use, actually recently we use MATLAB for our dynamics and the intermediate dynamics teaching and uh, machine design teaching. So that's the motivation for, for me to incorporate Adams into my teaching uh, with the help from Adams company. Um, so, um, so the students benefit a lot. Afterwards, they said, oh, we should incorporate these atoms in our vehicle dynamics and the robots class. This is a relatively higher level of the class. So we are just trying our best to incorporate that in our class. Because using atoms, the, the students can predict very complicated dynamics behavior, which can never solve by, it's or I, I would say, very hard for them to solve by hand calculation. Um, so after taking these two classes, the students just apply them for this for their senior project and their vehicle dynamics class and robot class. So for their projects, usually for Kapoli students, for each of the classes, you usually have four weeks term project. So. And one third of the students just to use atoms for the other classes. Um, so I want to give you an example of uh, how it is important. Just like Yi Jun showed up the the power hexo mechanism, and this mechanism is actually very simple for bar linkage. But the students can learn how to apply the contact force between the the saw and the working piece, mm -hmm. and also use the restitution model, because this model is actually is very useful. And so once the students learn this, uh, how to apply contact force with the restitution model, then I immediately ask them to apply for my uh, the gear transmission design. This is my research uh, interest. Mm -hmm. So they immediately apply this kind of simple skills to our gear analysis, dynamics analysis, and vibration analysis. 
uh, to their term project. Afterwards, usually they finish the class ME518. This is a graduate class, graduate level class. Um, after they finish that class, usually one or two of the best students publish paper with me. This is a one good example to let you know so this uh, importance of those tutorials. And of course, the, the uh, what's linkage? It's very typical uh, linkage design with the, uh, with the gearing as well. And the Adams machinery provides the gearing. So it's very simple. Just like uh, uh, if you follow the, uh, the mechanism how to build the gear, then the students can immediately build the pair of the gear and by input simple parameters, then they can immediately go to this uh, mechanism and to visualize the results. Um, so, and after they take those two classes, the students can do a very valuable research and also research job with me and also apply for their senior project. And I think this is a rebuild the level for industrial uh, job. And I think we prepare the students for that part. Okay. Um, and the last comments for this package is uh, in the future. And I hope every professor can use this package at the same time. Just, um, uh, just a certain theoretical verification um, for this package. Just uh, because this package is mainly for tutorial how to use uh, atoms to to build and to realize certain function. Actually, they 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 didn't provide that much about the ver uh, validation about results. This is what I I, I will try to do and. The, in my last year, actually, or this year, in the fourth quarter, I will teach uh, ME470 again. This is design and machinery. Then I will ask the students just to calculate. Um, because in our class, we can only calculate at a certain angle, just like your input from the crank at 30 degree, 45 degree. So how much the angle will be theta 3, theta 4, and the dynamic force. and the, dynamic torque at one moment. But the atoms can provide you the whole range, the time vary of the dynamic force and the dynamic torque. And you said, I hope every professor will provide uh, more kind of, uh, uh, to our, the atoms keys yeah, for us to use. And this, yeah, now I want to let okay. Dr. Frank Owen to talk. Yes. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions so far for Dr. Wu? Uh, I will let you know if there's any questions in the Q&A window. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, All right. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, uh, I, I guess, our future plans here at Cal Poly. Um, I'm coming from really a control uh, standpoint. I'm, I'm mainly a controls person. And uh, what I would say is what I've seen in uh, the teaching of controls in the past uh, 20 years or so, I think that that actually has, has been revolutionized by uh, the use of MATLAB and then the use of Simulink also. Um, of course, block diagrams are a big part of teaching controls and having a tool like Simulink that is block diagram oriented has made it uh, very easy to, for students to put together models of systems, controllers, and try things out. Uh, when I was a student uh, back in the uh, uh, 1970s, of course, we had to work everything out by hand. And uh, so the number of different possibilities we could ever consider was small. We would uh, work on a problem forever and ever, and then we were so tired at the end of working on it, we didn't want to work on another one. Whereas now with MATLAB and Simulink, what we found with our students uh, is they throw models together very quickly. Uh, they can play all sorts of games uh, with the models to see how changing parameters changes the, the system dynamics, et cetera. 
Uh, I think that what's going to happen with uh, Adams, and this goes back to what Leslie was talking about, is that there's a role uh, for uh, these mechanical modelers uh, that is going to be similar to the role played by MATLAB and Simulink in the controls field <clears throat> in making uh, the ability to uh, put together mechanisms, uh, complex mechanisms also that you've seen some examples of, uh, very quickly and then to play games with those mechanisms and see uh, how they behave if you change uh, certain parameters, mass properties, or kinematic uh, properties like distances how that changes the function of the mechanism. Um, what I've told uh, 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 MSC is I think actually that uh, there's a role for atoms to play not just in uh, uh, courses like machine design or the design of machinery. Certainly that's an important place and probably the main place that you'll use something like atoms, but I think even down at the uh, second year level for students in dynamics that atoms could play a role and I'm not sure exactly what that role is right now but uh, one thing that I that I do know uh, I consider dynamics especially dynamics statics also but to a lesser extent especially dynamics to be a course where the students really grow up they uh, start off uh, thinking like they did in high school and uh, when they leave the course, they're starting to think like engineers. But many students struggle with dynamics, and it's the visualization of what's going on that's difficult for them at that stage. And I think that Adams uh, 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 faces that head on and does a good job in making real uh, the uh, various uh, simple mechanisms that they encounter in design. Now I know that um, already, and, and I, I, I know this from my experience, dynamics is a completely full course. Putting something else in dynamics is a, is a, is a battle that is going to be very difficult to fight, and I'm not sure whether it's even winnable or not. But on the other hand, uh, I see how Simulink really has helped uh, my control students uh, grasp what's going on. They start thinking in block diagrams because they become proficient users of Simulink. And uh, they walk around after they've had some experience with Simulink looking at the world and everything in the world is block diagram. Uh, I think with uh, dynamics uh, at that level, you don't have to be a real sophisticated user of atoms to be proficient there. Uh, what we're going to try to do, uh, I think, to begin is to uh, do some modeling of simple, simple mechanisms. They're really in the beginner section of this tutorial uh, manual. And, uh, and to carry those um, examples further than it's possible to carry with um, no visualization and with just um, uh, manual calculations. Uh, like Dr. Wu said, when you're uh, looking at something like a slider crank mechanism, uh, oftentimes you're limited to looking at uh, its configuration at certain crank angles because it takes so long to do the analysis that uh, uh, you just can't go further than that. It's just too, you don't have enough time to do it. Um, I actually use a slider crank mechanism and talk about, about it for, three, for two days, uh, two lectures in dynamics because it is so rich in various things that are illustrated there, like uh, instant centers. Uh, also, I like, to, to, uh, uh, I like this tool of uh, vector diagrams for velocities and accelerations. Um, so for me, I think that what's going to be interesting is to get the examples that they have uh, provided in this tutorial uh, manual, for instance, the slider crank mechanism. What they've done is they've simply taken a slider crank and duplicated the problem like you would find it in a textbook. I think that uh, with a tool like Adams, you can carry that, um, that example much further than what you would see in a textbook. And uh, we're planning on getting uh, a few of these examples and developing them uh, to a much greater extent uh, to show many more things than you would see in a uh, textbook with uh, hopefully accompanying uh, 
YouTube videos with explanations of, of, of what you're seeing when you run the, uh, uh, the Adams model that you've created. So I, I believe that uh, for many students, including those at the very low level who have a real hard time with the visualization, um, that a tool like Adams will excite them, make them actually see, make, make the pictures in the textbook come alive, really, uh, in, in, in a video. Uh, and that uh, it'll it'll enhance this uh, this ability to visualize things in a way that they well it's exact like I said before it's exactly the same process that we saw in controls with MATLAB and Simulink that that really has changed the way that controls is taught and controls is understood by students and I remember just being perplexed by it when I was a student and I see now our students uh, here at Cal Poly. Uh, we're heavily into uh, 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 simulant uh, teaching in controls. Uh, they just grasped it so much readily than we were able to because we didn't have a tool like uh, MATLAB and Simulink. So uh, I guess that's my, my soapbox speech. Uh, and uh, we're, we'll take questions uh, if, uh, if anyone has any. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu and Professor Owen. Uh, let's go to the Q and A session first, and then uh, we will. Uh, Leslie will briefly introduce um, some of the partnership we uh, we have with universities. So, if you have any questions, please uh, type them down in the Q and A window, so we can have them answered during this session or following the event. Okay, let's go to the first question we have. I recently graduated from my master's. How can I download the tutorial or join them? Is it free or do I have to pay for it? And uh, if I have to pay, how much is the fee? Uh, I think I have covered that question during the presentation. So it's basically uh, free uh, for every student and professor. And uh, so it's actually basically free for everyone, everyone who wants to learn how to use Atoms. And you can access that from the website, MSC website under Academia, and go to Supplemental Tutorial Kits button, and you can download it without any registration, uh, things like that. And the second question, are you planning any tutorial in other languages? Uh, Leslie, would you take that question? Yeah, that's a, it's a very good question. Um, we we are we are discussing that very topic. Um, if anyone has a particular request, for example, uh, we were going to perhaps um, translate or do this in uh, in German and Chinese. Those were kind of the the, the two um, I would say uh, kind of target languages, um, mainly because of the presence of the machinery industry in Germany and, and China. Um, so if, if someone or if any of you on the, uh, in the meeting today um, have suggestions or want to see the tutorial kit in, in a different language, uh, let us know. And the other thing is we are, um, we are looking for feedback from everyone on us, how, what we might do in terms of a second edition of this tutorial kit. Perhaps there's a different textbook um, outside of the Norton textbook, for example, a dynamics textbook that you might want us to uh, do the same thing, build out a tutorial kit, um, pulling out specific examples or problems from that textbook and converting them into, into Adam's um, problems. So let us know, uh, both on the language side, if you'd like to see this in a different language, which language would you prefer, and also um, you know, textbook-wise, which textbook would you like us to uh, pursue next for your courses? OK, thanks, Leslie. Uh, next question we have is, uh, how to download Adam's software to my laptop uh, with a student version. Um, okay, so if you can just uh, go to the uh, academia and student center, if you click student editions, and then if you click download now, it will take you through a process basically where you need to upload your uh, student ID. And after that, they will send you uh, the license that you can used to um, download and uh, install the student edition for free. Uh, also, uh, to, answer, uh, to answer a relevant question, uh, there's a question asking, can exercises from Adam's tutorial kit be practiced in Adam's View student, edition, uh, student version? So 
Uh, if we take a look at uh, the 26 examples, um, so for the first uh, 19 examples, you can perform them in the student edition. Uh, and for the rest seven, uh, it does require you to have the Adams Machinery Gear module and the bearing module uh, and the, the, belt, uh, the belt module. So currently that is not supported in the student edition. Uh, we are considering uh, incorporating some of the basic uh, capabilities of machinery into the student edition, but it's currently not there. So if you want to practice that, uh, I would suggest you can do that in a computer lab or just um, uh, find a, a university computer with a full Adams uh, edition with the Adams machinery bundle. And also, of course, uh, for the problems where there's a gear, you can always, uh, I mean, if you prefer to do that without using the Adams Machinery gear module, you can, you can always using the, use the simplified gear representation in Adams, or you can create the gear, uh, the gear, the geometry in the CAD software and import that into the Adams model. I think uh, we have covered all those um, elements as to how you can import the parasolid CAD file into Atoms in the previous example. So you can perform those kind of uh, tasks by yourself, I believe, by the time you have, uh, you have, uh, go, you have, uh, you're working on the example 20 in section 3 and 4. Okay, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, does MSC software organize uh, Atoms advanced courses? Uh, so we, we do have uh, Atoms uh, training courses. Uh, for from uh, for different level of users, we have Adams uh, basic training courses. We have Adams advanced training courses. We do have that. So if you are interested in that, uh, send me an email. Uh, will you include uh, design of experiment and optimization sections to the tutorial in the future? That's a very good question. Uh, I think that's uh, that is definitely something we will include if it's not yet ava uh, available in the current edition. So this, uh, the first edition of Adam's Tutorial Kit is just the beginning step we're taking to help the student uh, better uh, make it easier for them to learn how to use Adam's. So if you have any suggestions, like Leslie uh, mentioned before, if you want us to uh, create more examples in a specific textbook or regarding a specific mechanism or for some methodology, please uh, also you can send me an email. We will uh, take that into consideration for the next edition. Okay, next question. Um, is uh, Okay, does the toolkit provide you how to link CAD model with Atoms? Uh, yes, there is. There are a few examples in the tutorial kit that teaches you how to basically import uh, the parasolid uh, CAD geometries into Atoms and add link and the motions to that to perform the dynamic dynamic analysis. Uh, the next question. Uh, we used atoms and the tutorials in our engineering design optimization course at mechanical engineering department, product development, and uh, automotive master program. And we will continue using it next time as well. And I can give you feedback on the material later. Okay, thank you. That's actually another question, but thanks for the feedback. Uh, Where the next that? one? Um, that's under the uh, Q&A window. I think um, yeah, there might be some questions that sent to me in, in in private, so I can I can send that to you uh, later after the the session, and uh, we can take a look. Um, so, oh, we uh, next is we need some control tutorial code simulation with MATLAB uh, based on industry and with uh, fixed parts. So, uh, Professor Owen, uh, maybe uh, we can work together and uh, develop, develop some of the uh, examples that covers the atoms and the MATLAB uh, co-simulation in the future. Okay. Uh, we, and we've done that here. Uh, it, it took some doing to align the correct uh, 
C compiler, MATLAB um, version, etc. But we have done that uh, so that we have a Simulink controller running a um, an Atoms model. Okay, great, thank you. Um, is Adam's car available in student edition? Um, currently it's not, uh, but it's in our uh, roadmap. Uh, is there any certification exam for Adam's software? Uh, yes, and for that it's a very good question. Leslie, do we have any um, uh, plan to do that in the future? Uh, we were looking at doing that. We, I don't know if Eugene, if you mentioned, we have this new e-learning platform um, that we've just recently launched, and we have several Adams courses available on demand online through this um, through this program. So we're actually the next step is to develop some uh, basically cert certification um, around those courses that engineers or students or professors, researchers could participate in and, and become certified in various, uh, you know, Adams, Adams courses and at different levels. So um, we're working with our, uh, I would say, our, our, the, the, the person who's responsible for the e-learning platform at MSC to develop that, and we'll keep you posted on the progress. OK, thank you very much, Leslie. Uh, I think due to the time constraint today, I think that will be the end of today's Q&A session. So there are uh, one or two questions uh, that we, it's, it's pretty detailed, so we will definitely follow up uh, after the event. And uh, we will um, also, uh, we will have a, um, make a copy of those questions and send it to Professor Owen and Professor uh, Wu so you can take a look if there's any question that's related, related to your field. Uh, you can uh, please also help uh, with those questions after the event. Okay. Um, I think, uh, Leslie, do you want to uh, wrap, wrap this up with uh, the last section? Sure. Uh, Yijun, you can just show the one slide, the next slide. Um, thank you, Professor Wu. Thank you, Professor Owen. By the way, great feedback, and we look forward to collaborating more with you. Um, and thank you for all the questions from the audience. We appreciate it, and we look forward to hearing and talking to you individually as we go forward. Um, so just, just to wrap up, I think most of you are aware we have uh, special pricing for software uh, for universities who wish to teach Adams uh, and also use it for research. So if you have questions about that, uh, let us know. Ejun mentioned, and I don't think a lot of universities are aware of this, that we have free student editions uh, across our products for students to download from our website and use for just, you know, take it home, use it on their laptops, get familiar with it, and, and obviously use it in support of some of the, the exercises or homework that maybe some professors are, are giving them as well. So we have a free Adam student edition, we have a free Nash Tran Patran student edition, and a free Mark student edition um, on the FEA side. And then I don't know if any of you are aware, but we also sponsor um, teams uh, participating in student competitions. So we provide free uh, Atom software to uh, teams who are participating in things like Formula SAE, Baja SAE series, um, RoboCup, and you see the others listed here. So uh, just just be aware that we definitely want to work with students and, and help sponsor those um, those activities as well. So. Th again, thank you, Ijun. Uh, thank you, Professor Wu. Thank you, Professor Owen. Um, and then thank you to everyone who participated today. Um, please, like us, Ijun, you had your email address there. Feel free to contact Ijun or myself with any additional questions, and we we look forward to uh, talking to you more about how we might, um, you know, help you incorporate this tutorial kit if you're interested into your courses, and then. Um, give us some feedback on what what the next edition of of this Adams tutorial kit should should look like, and and how we might apply it to different courses. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Professor uh, Wu and Professor Owen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very thank interesting. You. Yeah.